okay so first i am going to introduce myself so hi my name is Brittany. i'm going to be your nurse today i'm going to provide you with some privacy and identify you with two identifiers once i've done that i'm just going to explain what we're doing today so today i'm just going to teach you about some um post-operative exercises that we're going to want you to do the first that i want to instruct you on is going to be um, diaphragmatic breathing and sorry First, I'm gonna have you, I would sit my patient up and I'm going to explain that they're gonna put their hands on the lower border of their rib cage and close together to where the middle fingers are just touching. And when they take the breaths, I'm gonna instruct them to be pushing their hands with their abdomen and they're gonna feel their diaphragm go down and they should avoid using their chest and shoulders to breathe. And it should look something like this. So it's just gonna be And I would instruct them to repeat that and um, I would have them do that uh, 10 breaths every hour while they're awake um, during their post-operative period. Next, I would, I'm would i going to um, introduce the incentive spirometry that is sometimes offered to patients. So you, it's going, it would be a device that you inhale and exhale through and you set the indicator to the patient's best effort. And again, they would do 10 breaths um, every hour while awake, and they're going to um, try to breathe into it. And the expected um, level should be either 80% or greater of what we expect that's considered normal. Um, then I, once they demonstrate that and I ensure that it's correct, I would discuss huff coughing, which Again, I would have the patient sit up um, straight, with their chin up, and have their mouth open. I would explain for them to take two slow, deep breaths in through their nose and out through their mouth. Then, once they do that, I would have them, again, breathe in through their nose, and then hold it for um, two to three seconds, and then they're going to cough slow and forcefully in a huffing manner. Um, two or three times in succession. So it's going to be. <coughs> like that. And then I would, after they've done that, I would have them do one really strong cough and I would instruct them to repeat this whole entire cycle um, around four or five times. Then I would also instruct on con and demonstrate um, controlled coughing. So again, I would have my patients sit up and um, lean forward and I'm going to have them inhale slowly and um, probably have their arms folded and I would have them inhale through their nose and when they exhale they're going to exhale out through their mouth and lean forward and on their exhale they're going to cough two or three times um, so again it's going to be <coughs> and then they'd be splinting their possible incision so next I'm going to um, instruct on how, how the patient should be changing positions. So of course um, I would explain that changing positions every two hours is important to make sure that there's no, um, that the blood isn't stopping anywhere and that the bony prominences aren't being stuck on the bed at any point and causing bed sores. Um, the way that I would teach a post-operative patient to do so is when they're laying flat, they're going to um, bend their knees and then they're gonna reach and grab the bed rail and turn their knees and pull at the same time to help them turn positions. And of course, if I had a real patient, I would help them and demonstrate on how to do that. And if they're not able to do that themselves, I would be instructing staff and myself to ensure that the patient is being turned every two hours. And um, of course, when they're doing it, they're gonna be laying back. Next, I'm, I would um, instruct on leg exercises. So the first leg exercise that um, I would instruct on is for them to be laying completely supine on their back and they're going to lift their leg at their hip and it's gonna have their knee bent and their foot in the air. And they would hold for around two or three seconds and they're going to do each of these exercises. I would explain they would do each of these exercises five times. Um, and I would have them hold it for two to three seconds and then lay it back down and do the same on both legs. 
And then the next exercise that I would have them do and instruct on is to extend their legs. So they're going to push, they're going to flex their upper thigh muscle. And in doing that, they're gonna to try to be pushing their knee into the bed and lifting their foot slightly. And again, holding for two to three seconds. And again, I would explain that this improves blood flow for the patient to prevent like blood clots or anything like that. And they're gonna do both of those, that on both legs. Um, five times and then I'm going I would instruct on doing um, plantar extension and flexion so they're going to hold their leg out and with their foot they would extend their toes pointing it towards the bed and then flex it and pointing it their toes upwards and do this several times uh, around five times with each foot and then I would also instruct them on rotating their ankles. So I would again teach them to hold their foot and rotate their ankles in a circle. <sighs> again, around five times and do it with both feet. And then again, ex explain that it just is good for mobility and preventing blood clots and moving their muscles around. And the whole time that I'm doing this, I would make sure that if I'm gonna be touching the patient, I would be wearing gloves and I would, that would be to be like be preventing any infection um, risk and I would be demonstrating everything and instructing on it as well.